Hi and welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can create a colourful thank you greeting card in Word. So I've started here with an A4 page but obviously you want to fit the page to your card and the way to do that is to go to layout and then go to size and then down here you'll see the selection of sizes of card or paper that's available. So you just need to pick the one that you need. And for this card, I'm going to make it portrait. So I'm going to change the orientation of my page to landscape. And then I'm simply going to divide my page in half. So that I have an accurate guide that won't interfere with my design, I'm going to go to the top of my page and double click. I'm now in the headers and footers. So I'm going to go to insert, shapes, click on the drop down, and select line then you can see you've got this cross of a cursor. So click, hold down your shift key and drag the line down. If you hold down the shift key, it will make sure it's perfectly vertical. And once it's selected, you can see these green balls at either end. Go to a line and select a line to center. That will put the line in the middle of the page and then double click in the center of your page you'll come out of the headers and footers, your line will remain, but you won't be able to move this line or nudge it. So the next thing to do is to insert our text and our photograph. So we need to go to insert, shapes, click on the drop down, and I'm going to select this round edge rectangle, and then just click and drag out the rectangle. Now this can be as big or as small as you like, but just remember most printers, or there's a lot of printers, that don't have borderless printing. So you'll get a white line that will run around the outside of your page, not the inside here. So you just need to be mindful of that. I'll show you how to center it all at the end because you just move it about all the time. So select your shape, go to shape format and go to format pane. Over here, you've got a number of different customization menus. So first of all, I'm gonna to go to line and I'm going to change the kind of line I've got around the outside to sketch line. So I'm going to take it down to this line here. And you can just see I've got this wibbly line running around the outside of my shape and you can see it's distorted the edges. That's just to give it a bit of interest and so it just looks a little bit more fun. And then I'm just going to increase the width of that line. I'm just going to select the up arrow and I can change the color as well. I'll change that to orange, then go to fill and I'm going to go down to picture or texture. Now I've already rehearsed this, so this is the picture I've selected, but I'm going to show you how to do it. Go to insert, then go to where your picture is in your files. Now you have to be careful of which picture you select in terms of its crop. You can see that my image is a relatively square image, but if your image is a rectangle, it will distort it. So you can crop your images. So if you want a square image, so let me just show you. If I go to insert picture, let's go stock images. And let's say I've got this rectangle image here that I just want to crop, so it's a square. All I need to do is go to crop, click on the drop down, crop to aspect ratio, one to one. And then you can see that I can crop this image here. I can move it around in that square. I can also use these markers. If you do, make sure you hold the shift key down because otherwise it will distort into a rectangle, not a square. You can move this around and once you're done, press enter and you'll have cropped your image to a square. That will mean it will fit nicely inside one of these squares here. If you don't, this is what happens. So if I just go to the reason I'm showing you this is just because you should fully understand, otherwise it just won't work. If you go to insert, let's insert this rectangular image here and click insert. And you can see what's happened is you can see it's squashed. So this lady is quite squashed inside that square. So that's what will happen if you don't crop your images. Okay, so I think I've explained that. Now obviously this is a very colorful image. I've got this from AI. So I just wanted to show you how you can create cohesive colors for your card because if they're not, it does look a bit odd. So this surround color here was taken from the colors inside the image. The way to do that is to go to color. Now you can go to color here, or if you go to solid fill up here, you can go to color here as well. So go back to picture. 
and at the top here if you go to shape format you'll find that there are some shape fill colors here so you can see all of the color menus are identical regardless of where they are if you go to more fill colors you can see we've got this color wheel and you can move this little cursor around the color wheel to pick the color of your choice then you can use the brighten and darken slider you can see your color is selected here and you can move this slider to select the color of your choice now, if you're fortunate enough to have this eyedropper tool, you can just click on it. And then you can move it around your image and just click anywhere. And you can see it selected that color and just click OK. So we're going to use all those colors. What's quite good about it as well is when you do, you can see they all bring them up in recent colors. So they're really easy to go back and use. So we we'll use those for our text as well. So before we move away from the image, what I'm going to do is copy and paste it. So select it, hold down your Alt or Option key, click and drag. Then for this one, I'm going to go back over to the bucket icon and I'm actually going to select no fill. Then I'm going to go to color on the line here. So go down to line, click on the drop down and I'm going to change the color to pink. And then I'm just going to click, hold down my shift key, key to maintain the ratio. I'm just going to move that over the top. Now you don't have to do this, but I'm just doing this to show you the versatility of these assets and you can change and move them around. And this one really, you just put as and where you want. So once you've done that, let's go on to the text. So go to insert. Now I've used word art before, but it started to go a bit clunky on me, but it doesn't really matter. You can use either or I'm going to use a text box. So go to draw text box, click and draw out a text box. Now from the thumbnail, you can see that all of the, in fact, I'll show you on the rehearsal one. You can see that all these letters here are actually angled. And the only way you can do that is type one letter at a time and then copy and paste it and then move it. So I'll quickly show you how to do that. So let's just type in the letter T and let's fully customize this letter then all we've got to do is copy and paste. Go to the Home tab, change your font. I've chosen Cooper and I think I chose Bold as well. And I chose a font size of 110. And in fact, it was 120 in the end. And then press Enter. Now, first of all, I'm going to change the color. So I'm going to pick green. And then you can see if I deselect, we've got this black outline and a white background. I'm going to get rid of both of those. So go to shape format, make sure you've selected it. Go to no outline and no fill. It's on those two icons. And then I'm going to select on here. You've got duplicate menus. You can select it on here, which is the outline of your letter, or you can go over to format shape and go to text options here. And then you can just select your text here. And go down to text outline I'm going to select solid line and you can see at the moment it's pink you can just see that outline if I make the line a bit wider you can see the line that I'm trying to create now I like to create a white one but you can create any one you like and I'll leave it for about 4.5 and then you need to go to this icon here this again is under text options go to shadow Click on the drop down and then you can select a shadow. It's best to select this top one here because you've got it against this white background. You can fully adjust this shadow. You can just move all of these sliders. And then once you're happy with your letter, just copy and paste it. So hold down the Alt or Option key and just copy and paste it. Deselect, reselect this. So I'm just going to angle it at the top here. And then this one, I'm going to simply change to H and then select it again and then go to the home tab and here you can once again change the color and then copy and paste this now what you can do you can just copy and paste lots of them because you're going to need them for the top and the bottom so you just keep copy and pasting these if you want to and then we'll just select this one rotate it and then let's select another letter. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put all the thank you in to the top and bottom because I think you've got the idea. It's just a simple case of copy and pasting and changing the letters.
So once you're relatively happy with the placement, if not, just adjust them. But now what I'm going to do is select them all. By selecting the first one, hold down your command or control key and just select all the other letters. And you actually want to make an adjustment. Say, for example, you want to adjust the size. Just select them all. You go back over to the Home tab, go to the font size, and you can just adjust them. So once you've adjusted the size, you can adjust the letters to make them a little bit closer together because as they reduce in size, they will move apart a little bit. Then you can go ahead and just select them all. Go to Group and select Group. And now, once again, they're all one element. Let's just go ahead and do that to these letters here. Go to the Home tab, adjust the font size and press Enter. And we'll just move those letters together. Again, select them all. Go to Shape Format, go to Group and select Group. So once you're happy with the placement, you have to realistically do this by eye to place the words in the middle of your image. Because you can see when I've grouped these together, the margin between the edge of the text box and the first letter here is much smaller than the distance from here to here. So it's not actually centered. And if I select it, go to the Home tab and select Center, you can see it's grayed out. So this part you will have to do by eye and just pop it in the center wherever you want it. And the same to the top. Make sure that placement is exactly where you want it. And then you can select all three, go to Shape Format, select Group, and make that a group. And then if I go to Align to Center, it's going to align it to the center of the page, not to the center of this side of the card. So I'll show you a trick in a minute how to do that. But what we are going to do first is put the text in at the bottom. So once again, go to Insert, Text Box, Draw Text Box and then click and draw out text box at the bottom. Just pop in our text. Then we're going to customize the text. So select it, go to the Home tab, change the font. I'm going to select Atma, increase the font size using this Increase Font Size tool here. Then I'm going to change the color to match the colors we've already got. I'm going to use pink. Then I can go to Center, but as you can see, if I deselect, we've got a white background and a black borderline. So again, select it, go to Shape Format, go to No Outline and No Fill. So now you've got your two assets in here. What you can do if you want to is just select both of these once you're happy. Go to Align, Align to Center, so they're all lined up. Now you do have to check this that you are happy with the alignment because something like the edge of this or the edge of this will sometimes push it slightly out of center. So although the boxes here might be lined up, it might not be lined up visually. So just check on that and then select group and group again. And now this is all one element. So to make sure it's perfectly lined up, what I do is to go to insert shapes, click on the square, then very carefully, I'm going to go to the top left corner here, click and drag out a rectangle that perfectly covers this page. Select Send Backwards, click on the drop down and select Center Back. And then you can see it's selected. Hold down your Command or Control key, select the element in the middle. And then what we're going to do is to go to Align and then we're going to select Align to Center. Now, because this box is lined up with the center here and lined up with the edge here, then it will ensure that this element here is perfectly aligned within this space here, which is the front of your card. Once you've done that, just select the background and just delete it. And now we know that's perfectly centered. Now all we can do is go to insert page break and it will send your card to the bottom page, but it doesn't matter because it doesn't matter which way you print these out. Then what you will do is you want to print something on this page here. So if you go to text box, draw text box, select your text, go to the home tab. You can increase the size, change the font. You can center it. You can change the color of it. And then once again, let's just take out the borderline. So go to Shape Format, No Outline, No Fill. And then you can center this one probably by eye using 
the distance here and the distance here. You can use the other technique if you want to, it's completely up to you. Now if you want to fill out the whole card you can do that just using one text box and just using your return key to put a whole message in here or you can use several text boxes by literally copy and pasting and typing additional text. So this will be the inside of your card, you just print that straight through the printer and then just turn it over to be able to print the front of your card. Now to remove this line in the centre, double click at the top of either page, click on the line, just press delete, double click back inside your document and there you can see the line has disappeared. So I hope that's helped you today. If it has, please like and subscribe and have a great day.